All right, this is Jolie here, four seconds out with the Rumford ball. Johnny Fisher, how are we? Good, thanks, mate. How are you? Feeling good? Yes, I'm very, very good. Excited for this weekend, excited for your fight. Um, how are you feeling, fight week? It's different to when you started your career because obviously your name's getting bigger, you're getting into bigger fights. I just like seeing the opponent and seeing their eyes. I like looking in their eyes and I can suss out what they're feeling. I don't see intimidation with this guy. A couple of them have seen intimidation, so I know I'm in for a tough night's work, and I'm prepared for that. What do you see? I see someone who's he's wary, but he's not intimidated. When I stood up there, I didn't see intimidation. I didn't see intimidation in Torero's eyes either, but with a couple of them, Matt Gordon couldn't have seen a little bit of... Not, not intimidation is the wrong word for him, but wariness. And I can see a little bit in him, but I'm going to be in for a tough night. There's obviously a fight's always the main part, but how much do you put on those face-offs, and what do you take from them? You can take little bits, it's like anything, it's like, there's always little things in the build-up. You can win a fight, you can't win a fight all the time, but little one at one percent that you can gain. And I don't think anything's been lost or gained there because I've seen that he's ready to fight. And all that does to me is fire me, fire me up even more. Who are your inspirations from like the mind games perspective? Obviously there's, there's millions of boxers that have come before you. I don't really uh, have mind games per se, per se in my head because I'm always honest with what I do. But I do remember uh, one thing Lenny Butcher taught, taught me, who was, uh, was a good pro coach, um, taught me in a five-star. He said, whenever you're staring someone out, don't look away first. Never look away first. So that's something I always do. We're going to expect some uh, intense face-offs in your next uh, few fights. Then. Yeah, yeah. I don't look away first. <laughs> now, how do you manage fight weeks now with the pressure that obviously comes with having a lot of fans? Um... It doesn't change because I try and block out all of that stuff. People, like, it's great to have the support I have, but my phone stays switched off. I don't reply to any messages. I'm really grateful for all the support, but a lot of people, because a lot of my supporters, you've got to understand, aren't traditional boxing fans. They don't understand the preparation and they think they can just talk to you and text you and ring you up and think that's, that's a normal thing to do. They think they're being helpful, which is very nice of them to do that, but that's not, you've got to get into the business. This is my work now. This is, this is where I've got to do a job. So no outside influences. I've got me, Mark Tibbs, Jimmy Tibbs, Sonny Cannon, Adam and Shane. They're my team. They're the only people I want to see on fight week. Business. Business. <laughs> How much do you think what your dad's done, obviously, Big John, helps? Obviously, as Eddie mentioned up there, if you were the one selling all the tickets, it would be, it would be a problem. Um, say that again, I didn't understand. How much does what your dad does, selling all the tickets, how much does that help? Massively, massively helps. Because as Eddie said, I wouldn't be, I, he wouldn't want me doing that all myself. It's like a, a whole other job in itself. So very grateful for the help that my dad gives me. Um, and as I said, my dad understands. I'm in a fight bubble now. I'm, in a, I'm getting ready to fight. I, I speak to my dad every now and then. I ring him once a day. But I don't really see him uh, in the fight week because I've got to get the job done. And he does get nervous on fight night as well. So I don't want to be around nervous people either. Are you going to have a celebratory Chinese? Yeah, Sunday night, always going to have a celebratory Chinese. Because right after the fight, it's very hard to find time to eat because you're just rushing about and, and doing all different stuff. So I'm just excited for that Chinese on Sunday night. The best feeling is when you wake up. I've done it a few times now. Obviously, you had four fights. That Sunday, you just wake up, you know, the hard work's done. You can chill out for a week, have, eat what you want, do what you want, and just chill out. Now, we joked about business there a moment, minute ago when you mentioned all the names and the team that you have around you. How important is it to have, have a solid team? It is, and um, I look at, I take inspiration from other heavyweights who've been before, especially Lennox Lewis. He kept his mum close to him, he kept family members, his friends from when he was very young, and I know who the genuine people are around me. I've got so many supporters, which I'm grateful for, but like my cousin Michael, my dad, my uncle Dave, my uncle Stuart, these are all different people that I know, my, my dad's best friend Brad, they're all people, Jimmy, Jimmy Devlin, I'm, I'm trying to name them all now, but these people I know have been there from the start and they're, they're my friends and they're, they're people that I can rely on and that's what you've got to do, you've got to keep your family and friends close to you and it's got to be a small circle. Of course, they'll all be there on Saturday night, do we know when you're going to be walking, is it going to be co-main, as you have so many people there for you? Co-main event, I think it's more the fact uh, Felix Cash is obviously trained by Tony Sims as well, give them a bit more time. <laughs> Because Felix Cash operating at a much higher level than me. Uh, I've got a huge respect for him as well as a fighter. So I'm just very privileged to be at, at that position just, just before the main event. And the ring walk, talk to me about how that was last time and, and uh, yeah, how good it must be. It was electric. It just felt, I thought I'd walk out and there'd be one section of the supporters would be for me, like one section of the O2. But I went around the whole bowl was full of Romford Ball supporters, which is just unbelievable and to have that in my full fight was just was crazy and this time it's going to be double and in the smaller venues it's going to feel even more packed so I've got to prepare myself for that as well. Yeah I am um, 
just interviewed Eddie and he thought this was a, a crunk Johnny Fisher top. He was like, he was like, you need to get a Rumford bull on the back, so maybe we should make that happen. Yeah, let's get you one. Let's get you one. After the fight, I'll make sure I'll get you one. Respect, man. Looking forward to it. One more thing. Um, what can we expect this year in terms of how many fights you could be having? I've got seven fights on my contract, so hopefully I'll get out seven times. It'll be 11 and 0 at the end of the year. Um, and then the picture sort of takes care of itself. If you're fighting it seven times, you're going to progress and you're going to get better and you'll be ready for tougher tests. So I know they're all coming. This one is a little step up as well. And the last one before that was meant to be a step up. And the one before that with Danny Whitaker, who's obviously fought for a century area title. So I'm passing these tests and that's what I've got to keep doing. Just keep passing the tests. So when the year's done, do you believe you could end it with, you know, the likes of selling about 15,000, 20,000 tickets, all fights and all? I don't think I'll get to 15,000, 20,000 at the end. I mean, including every fight. Oh, what? All, what all, all in, yeah, I reckon I could well do well over 20,000. I'm not joking, for this fight I could have done 4,000 tickets if I sold them out from the beginning, if I got tickets from 4,000 from the beginning. But by the end of the year, I reckon I could sell out a 10,000 10, arena, 10,000 person arena, which would just be unbelievable because it's just testament to the people who are supporting me. Shane, want to come in quickly? What do you make of, uh, what do you make of that? How many can he be selling by the end of the year? He's done fantastic this time around. Um, I just think the more hype he keeps getting, the more knockouts he gets, the more strong performances, the fan base will just keep going. I think Matt Room and Eddie have done a, a great job of promoting him as well. Um, Adam has got him a great contract where he'll be very active this year as well. And I think, yeah, it's just going to grow and it's going to be massive. I think he could do the copper box maybe a bit bigger this year, 100%. I think not, not a problem. On, on his own as well. How important is it for him to just stay active as well this year? Say again, sorry? Oh, massively important. Where Johnny is in his career, where he didn't have like, the stellar amateur career and whatnot, it's very important for him to stay active because he's doing his learning in the ring and in sparring as well. So it's very important he stays active, learning all the time with Mark Tibbs and uh, keeps racking up those big W's as well. Thank you very much, guys. Appreciate it. Good luck. Best of luck. Nice one, mate. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers. No problem. <laughs>